I've never seen it. I would say this is the first time I've gone completely into it, not knowing what movie someone is doing. Oh, so uh, this is because a what, do you remember you. what all was on your list? The the list was like I can I actually, gave you like four or five, and I was basically like anything that's been like a huge action blockbuster. Like I've never seen any of the Fast Furious movies. I've never seen uh, Men in Black. Yeah, I remember that. Like uh, uh, it was a really, Day. really, really uh, just Will Smith. <laughs> good it sounds like list. specifically. Just, it does sound like you just don't like Will Smith. Yeah, which um, you were ahead of the no, time I hate on that. shitty. <laughs> I hate shitty action movies. Sure, if that makes sense. It definitely so makes it's sense. Like, don't even try to do the plot. Like I, you know, growing up, it's like Midnight Run was, Here was like y- action movie yeah. with great actors, and it was funny. So don't. Give me Fast and the Furious. Here is uh, here's your list. Incredible list. Uh, <laughs> and you know what we'll do is, yeah. if it's one of these on the list, we'll try and see if we can guess which one it is. Okay. Ratatouille. Okay, and I should tell you, I haven't seen Ratatouille. Okay. okay. Men in Black, Jurassic Park. Oh my God. Fast and Furious, all of them. Uh, Transformers, all of them, I assume. Yeah. You're not just a fan of Bumblebee and avoiding yeah. the larger it's franchise. It's too late to catch up now. You, <laughs> you don't think Jurassic Park is a shitty action movie, though, Hold do on, you? list, list. Aladdin, okay. Toy Story, Minions, hilarious, uh, to be on the list. Guardians of the Galaxy, The Hunger. I say hilarious, Minions might have made more money than all of these other franchises. Yeah, yeah, can, I think there's so. no <laughs> giant Toy Story overlooking the valley. Uh, and Guardians of the Galaxy and Hunger Games. And I said basically anything except Guardians of the Galaxy and Hunger Games. Because okay. we do a lot of Marvel. and Or, or, or Guardians of the Galaxy and Fast Furious. We do those sometimes. Oh, yeah. Um, I'm going to guess Jurassic Park is what you did. Uh, let me guess. I want to... Because mm, okay. this is a great... We've never done Jurassic Park or Ratatouille. We, I don't think we've ever done Men in Black. Uh, we've done maybe Transformers a long time ago. Never done Aladdin. Never done Toy. I think Toy Story is. I would say is probably one of the five most watched movies. I well, haven't. I seen think Toy all Story. of those are on the blo- the, uh, the like the all time grossing like top list. Fifty. Yeah. Except yeah. maybe Ratatouille. I could see sliding out. Um, what do you think it is? Uh, I mean, I'll just throw. I'm. I'm gonna guess. It seems like you got a thing against Will Smith. So let's go with. Uh, <laughs> let's go with Men in Black. And I was ahead of the curve on that one, right? Yeah, really? Yeah, really? Seriously? Yeah. Well, isn't that great when you you turn out to be right? right. Yeah. Because I remember George Carlin. There's one special. It was just in the midst of like everybody had the yellow wristbands and like Tiger Woods is the biggest star in the world, sure. and he's just like, thir- no, not even a joke. First sentence was. Fuck Tiger Woods and fuck Lance Armstrong. <laughs> yeah, like, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> and it was like there man. was like a day in 2008 where he became the most correct person in the world, and then he, <laughs> yeah. and then he checked out. <laughs> He's like, I could, he he faded out like he walked into the corn in Field of Dreams. <laughs> right. after that yeah, happened. that guy sucks. That guy sucks. That guy sucks. Um, I'm out of here. <laughs> what a you know that was when I was in college. I wouldn't saw Carlin. This was really? like I grad. Uh, this is probably 2000. Eight, actually, I think maybe seven. Oh wow! And I didn't know really what stand up was. Ah. You know, I knew what it. I didn't know it was a job you could have, kind of. Yeah, yeah. Me to too. me, it was like Lewis Black was the only stand up comedian, <laughs> and even then, he was a TV guy who would sometimes do that in person. Uh huh. Um, I knew a little bit about like Mitch Hedberg was right. like, but he, he's the first like comedy show I ever saw. Twitter kind of was whatever. Okay, not really. Good. So you're and watching like, Comedy Central or you watching HBO? I would watch comedy. I would uh, actually Kaza Comedy mm-hmm. Central presents. Oh, yeah, yeah. And see, like, Jeremy Hotz, Uh who I thought was really funny. And then you sort of, like, it's. I thought it was so insane that there was a comedian I hadn't heard of in the world. Oh, yeah. And turns out that's all of them. Yeah. (laughs) (laughs) Like, when you get Well, those Comedy Central half hours were, Hedberg's was uh, unreal. Yeah. Yeah. Like, if if you've ever seen the backstory on that. Oh, yeah, dude. It's, it was a train wreck. And basically... The cut was like all the jokes that he did the second time. Yeah. Because he didn't do well until they have he was over. And he went like twenty minutes over. Everybody was so pissed at him. Sure. They have the full like forty three minute taping yeah. on YouTube that you can watch him bomb for the first like twenty five minutes right. and be like, I'm just gonna do some old jokes and then they all start doing well. And, and then yeah. he does that thing where it's like, I should start the show again and then he does like the opening two jokes as a joke. And they kill, right. and then that's what they actually that's used so in the thing. <laughs> that's movie magic, everybody. <laughs> that's um, why I don't feel bad editing all giant fake laughs into my special. I wish Hedberg <laughs> was around just to ask people where they're from for reals. Oh, my God. <laughs> <laughs> um, okay, so what movie is it? It is 
Jurassic Park. Let's go. Nice. <laughs> it does seem like I might have known. I'm the worst person to be, get it right, but I did not know. Well, I don't know. Like, I, I actually didn't even know if animated movies count because this is like, I'm sure your bar gets higher the more movies. So uh, everything becomes in like this shitty movie or yeah. classic movie. Uh, sure. Um, I like, I mean, I, I think any of those are rat, movies like Ratatouille that we forget were a giant cultural thing for mm-hmm. a little while. But once again, because they're not a super, like it's just, they're not continually brought like fast and furious. We think about every two years. Yeah. Cause it's either about to come out or just came out. Right. Another one. But, uh, we don't do a lot of the movies that I, I love Rat- I Jurassic parks made my favorite movie. Oh but yeah. I love oh, Ratatouille and I love these, uh, um, but they just kind of then go away. But you're like, I think that won an Oscar and we all think <laughs> about it all the time. Yeah, um, what was that one? Crash, crash, crash. Yeah, that was like the worst Oscar best picture ever because like nobody even watched that again after. It was wild that that usually it takes a few years before everyone's like, "What were we thinking?" Yeah. But that one they gave it to it, and everyone's like, "Actually, I don't like that anymore." Yeah, <laughs> like as they're doing their speech, everyone's it was like turning very on them. quickly. You're like, "Oh, this isn't good, and it's yeah. not gonna hold up at all." Yeah. And usually the year going up to the Oscars, people will figure out, like, oh, is this still relevant? But, yeah, that was just the yeah. one where it was like, oh, man, this is bad. <laughs> I wonder how, yeah. Um, well, let's Jurassic Park it up, and then we can talk about other, all, right. all these other things. I so. don't know if you're going to take this to heart or not, that it's, I feel like this script is better. You're gonna, <laughs> Without having seen it. You're going to want. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> I haven't seen it, but I can uh, tell you this is I, definitely. So, generally, better. I'll have you do the. Stage directions. Okay. And then and you can be if the I don't two have guys. To, yeah, or you and Adam can be the two guys. If I, I don't have to play a part, I can just, it can just. I would love play. to have you two guys okay. read it. Let's okay. Do it. Is it just two guys? Yeah. Just like the movie. Yeah, so. <laughs> <laughs> this Until is, the dinosaur eats them both. This, I feel like, uh, I feel like uh, Scorsese, we're doing this for Martin right now. No, no, who who directed Jurassic Park? Spielberg. Yeah, oh, it was Spielberg. Okay. Yeah, he would love this. The Scorsese though. of large. Which, <laughs> <laughs> uh, okay. All right. All who's right. Tim and who's Joe? He, here's the. Uh, oh yeah. Which he, which one do you want? I mean, by looking at us, who do you think? I would say you're Joe. Okay. All right. Adam yeah. will be Joe. I'll Tim it up. Tim it up. Okay. So, this is here. Here's a twist. Even before, where the exterior of Knott's Berry Farm. <laughs> Yeah. The two owners of the farm, Joe and Tim, look out at the empty amusement park. <laughs> Just four guys playing hacky sack by a food truck. Look at this place. It's empty on a Saturday. I always felt like the name Knott's Berry Farm was confusing. Yeah, maybe you're right. Knott's Berries, like, do we not have berries? Yeah, and if we don't have berries, why, why would people want to come to a farm with no berries? Right. If there's two things I know in this life, people fucking love berries and they love dinosaurs. Yeah, they got dino fever, all right. Well, if we don't have berries, maybe we can get some dinosaurs. Not like a real one, but we could dress up our two Great Danes over there. Yes, yes. Put spikes on their back, tell the kids they're triceratops, and just watch the money roll in. Exterior, Knott's Berry Farm, is now known (laughs) as Jurassic Park. Six months later. We see the two Great Danes dressed as dinosaurs. Six That's months. how long it took to order Six the fucking months. costumes. <laughs> Spikes are hard to uh, fit. Yeah, they're a tough ship. Hey, yeah. it's word of mouth. It's not all on Twitter. <laughs> <laughs> nah, they were ready six months ago, but now they got fucking. Now they got customers. We see two Great Danes dressed as dinosaurs playing with a huge crowd gathered. Tim and Joe are both just looking on, counting their money. This is a pretty great idea. We just have to wait to get a few more Great Danes. Just then, we see an actual dinosaur emerge from behind the trees. Everyone is terrified. Holy shit, that's a real dinosaur. What's it doing here? That dinosaur even thinks the Great Danes are real dinosaurs. How do you know? Because he's trying to have sex with our Great Danes. It's like when Bugs Bunny used to dress up like a female dog to trick the hunter's dog. That's what our Great Danes are doing to that dinosaur. They're confusing that dinosaur. It doesn't look confused to me. That dinosaur is fucking your dog. Well, it looks like it's time to call Jeff Goldblum. Wait, wait, why Jeff Goldblum? Although I've never been in this movie before, I think he does something important in this movie. We need to go to the bourbon room where Jeff Goldblum (laughs) plays jazz piano every week and convince him to help us. Oh, yeah. 
I feel like yeah. it, I feel like this is a popcorn movie from there on out. I think uh, <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> even just getting Jeff Goldblum could be a whole first movie, That's especially the, now. Yeah. Just yeah. the setup to he it. He is always playing jazz yeah. at that place. <laughs> yeah, and he takes pictures with everybody. I think he's approach. I think you could probably talk to him about it. I would say now that Marty has passed away. At the Marty and Elaine at the Dresden across the street, oh, I right. think he might be the novelty oh. of uh, uh, Vermont Avenue now. He's moved. It, the funny thing is, he's moved a couple times, right? Wasn't the what was the original place like before the pandemic? And then I think that got too popular. It was like a Tuesday night. Yeah, there was just this thing where every it was just you'd see a lot of people alone in a picture with Jeff Goldblum for right. a while. Yeah. And you're like, where's this happening? Because he's very fa- – and he just – he looks like – I mean, he's so, he just looks like an idea. I don't uh-huh. know if that makes sense. He's just like a flowing idea in all these pictures. Like he's yeah. gangly and like around pe- – and he, I just kept seeing him like, where the fuck is Jeff Goldblum at, with ev- all of my friends? Yeah. <laughs> Anytime someone would come visit, oh, we're going to – and then, yeah, he just does jazz Tuesdays. And I guess it has Effie. grown a lot and a lot. What's yeah, the name of the place? I, I was remember the Dresden. It's the only place I remember is the Dresden. It was across the street from the Dresden. Oh, at first, okay, like okay. up the block towards House yeah. of Pies. This is a. Uh, I knew we knew Jurassic Park would lead to inside baseball. <laughs> Los Feliz, L.A. talk. <laughs> But then he got married and had a kid, and I think that slowed down the jazz where it has uh, to be like. Doesn't it? I always. think he's selling tickets and making it more of an appointment. Right. Thing it was just he was just a bar crooner, just a single movie star guy hanging out at the bars, and uh, it's like the thing that sometimes you would think to yourself, you know, if I got really famous, I'd still do cool stuff that people like, <laughs> <laughs> and he did it. It, I, it's got to be tough for him to do anything, man. I've, yeah. Have you been around, like, anybody? What's, like, the most famous person you've been around that's, like... Probably me. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Guinness World Record holder Adam <laughs> Newman, potentially. Um, I don't... Yeah, I mean, it, it just it does have to be tough and frustrating. Like a comedian, maybe? I, I'm trying to think of who would I, be the... Yeah, the, uh, I got some more famous comedian friends who I'll be on the road with or something, and it's, uh, yeah, it just turns into a whole thing of you're just they're f- you just turn into the photographer. Can you oh, I mean, for sure, whatever? not for sure, but for, uh, I, I did shows with Eric Andre in Atlanta. Oh, right, yeah, okay. And he is, there's something I believe even more, and I want to talk about Jurassic Park, but there's something I believe that's even more, Jeff Goldblum has this, comedians definitely have it, which is the, I could probably just walk right up to you. Yeah. Like an accessibility. Uh huh. Yeah. Um, where people just walk up and to tell Eric you Andre the and be like, hey, Eric, uh, you could fuck my wife. And he's like on the phone with his family. You know, he like <laughs> has a life. But there's something about a comedian that you're intimately a friend with them. Yeah. That you can, they're very, I think he's very approachable versus like, I don't know if people would, well, Tom Cruise is not a good example, but like, yeah. if you just walk right up to Matthew McConaughey sitting at a table or something, he seems less accessible. Well, like Bill that. Murray. Apparently, for as like easygoing as he is, he is like a real dick to confront. Like he doesn't like when just like random frat right. dudes just come up. He'll just be like, "Get the fuck out of here!" Yeah. And so, like, you do have to have that little edge of like, maybe we shouldn't bother him. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> no. I think you got to figure what's going. I have heard uh, Adam Scott tell this story about how he thought he was famous, and then he went out to eat with Will Ferrell. Oh, wow. And he's like, Will Ferrell, the reason no one sees him is because his life is impossible. Yeah. yeah. Because everyone in the world thinks they're best friends with Will Ferrell. Right, right. And so everyone walks up to him and screams milk in his face or screams Buddy the Elf line in his uh-huh. face. And because he is, you know, this century's that comedian yeah, where he's just so famous and so quotable. And <laughs> all of his movies came out when quoting a movie – was a person was like <laughs> a thing to do. Yeah. You were like, I'll memorize Talladega Nights and right. just say it all the time. And so, uh, but Adam Scott, I don't remember if it was an interview or what he was doing, but he was just like, I thought I was like famous, and I thought people. And then I went out to eat with Will Ferrell, and I'm like, oh, I am nobody. Yeah. This guy cannot function. Well, I mean, I did. I was lucky enough to while I was working with. I mean, this is even funnier. When I was in New York, Ed Helms used to run like a Monday night. And so that was, like, before he was doing he, – like, he was doing commercials, I think, before he oh, got the wow, Daily yeah. Show. Yeah. And so it is – and then – and Gaffigan, who I was working with at the time, like, over the next year got, like, hugely famous. Mm-hmm. So then he became, like, a guy that, like – That's a kind holy cow, like torrent he, that I did was Jim Gaffigan's Yeah, special. yeah, that was a great one. Because I liked his corn background. Right, right. <laughs> you know what? Yeah. And, it's and all these guys are insanely nice, too, but I've met most of these people, and probably you have, too, both of you – most of the ways I've met all these people have been, even if we're not on the same show or I'm opening, we're, we're at some thing where everybody knows we're comedians. So it's, you're a little bit 
Yeah. It's a little bit less uh, rando on the street. Yeah, I mean, I mean the, mo- the the only other Echelon guys, like Matt Damon produced this show that I was working on. Mm-hmm. So he did Largo with us a couple times. Like, okay. And uh, – and that was like other like <laughs> guys would follow yeah, him yeah, into yeah. the bathroom. I mean, that's like like TMZ was there. That's so much more famous than any comedian. And like. I will, <laughs> but I will say like he handled it better than anybody I've ever yeah. seen because it was like very obnoxious and like you know like he just handled himself so well. You got to imagine being the most famous guy from Boston. <laughs> is a horrible burden. <laughs> yeah. Like, being the guy people from Boston want to yell a thing at, there's a reason Tom Brady left. Yeah. Like, it's just like, that's got to be an aggressive fan base. Right, right. <laughs> um, and he's been famous since he was, like, what, like, 24, 25? Yeah. Google hunting, it's, it's been a long time. And he, you know, and, and the funny thing is, like, the, the part that bothers you is, like, he is, like, super nice, mm-hmm. and he's great. Like, he knew I was, like, a big basketball fan. Like, I'm a Celtics fan, so... He was like our first trip. Me and Ben did from uh, Boston to LA for for acting. We stopped in French Lake, Indiana, to like try Hell to yeah, see Larry yeah, yeah. Bird's house. And I'm like, that's there you awesome, go. That's man. Yeah, yeah. Well, I'm a Celtics fan too. I grew up in New oh, Hampshire. Okay. The We're, Boston yeah. pilgrimage. Are you, are you from New England? No, I'm from upstate New York. We actually oh, cool. just did uh, Hampton Beach. Oh in yeah, New Hampshire. Of course, yeah, that, yeah, yeah. That uh, it's right on the water there. Yeah, I'd never even right. heard of that place, yeah, but dude. Uh, it was amazing. Yeah, I was just there. Yeah, I'm and uh, like near Ithaca, like in the middle of nowhere, upstate New York. Yeah, yeah. So it was like uh, you could either pick the Knicks or they were always terrible. But I, I liked the watching Celtics. Larry Bird, so. Generally, you're only like five years away from a really fun team at any given point in their history. Yeah. Oh, wow, I mean this this last year, I I don't know how much sports you want to get into on. Well, whatever. You're a big Chiefs fan. I know you guys talk about. Sports oh, you're a Chiefs fan. Huh? Yeah, yeah. But oh, cool. um, but yeah, no Celtics. This was an insane. This was almost. An insanely cool year. Yeah, uh, the last yeah. two years. Yeah, so. yeah, uh, and fun. I like when a team that you like is like fun and cool and not bot because right. that's like exciting. Uh, versus like everyone coming together like the Nets, where you're just like, well, I'm kind of rooting for an implosion here. Yeah, because yeah, it's yeah. like a team up situation that I'm. T- I like that. Like the, we draft these guys, we build around these guys, and the Celtics. And then we're gonna go to a break. The Celtics had, unfortunately, not anymore. Had Marcus Smart. Right. Yeah, Ooh, I absolutely love him, because too. I hate Kansas University, and he would destroy them when he went to Oklahoma. <laughs> I like, I'm like, I'll just root for this guy forever because alone he beat Kansas. Anyways, we're going to be right back. All right, we are back. Uh, <laughs> Paul Morsey here has never seen Jurassic Park. Yes. What? Well, it's, wait, wait, I'll give it to you guys. What is the initial thought on the script? Do you feel like there's places to go here, or did we go too fast? Dude. The idea of putting <laughs> Jurassic Park at like a failed real theme park and just like upping it yeah. with dinosaurs is. Dude, I have is to tell you this: I didn't know your Knott's Berry Farm confusion thing was me for years. Yeah, like, not, I don't not, get not it joking either. At all. I understand Knott's ma- is like the company K N O T T S that makes the the jelly, and they have their farm that's like a theme park. Yeah, I think too. But for a long time, I thought it was called Knottsbury, like N O T S B U R Y, mm-hmm. and I was like, "Oh, that must be like a little town. Like Knottsbury would be the name of the town. Yeah. And this is their farm." I, I had feel no like people idea. still don't know what it is. It's like it was kind of like shitty Disney. Like it's like I would uh, equate <laughs> it to like West Coast Branson a little bit. <laughs> yeah, where it's very much like, well, we went there. It but is confusing. Like it a lot. All they say is it's not a berry farm, but what is it? A berry. F- <laughs> that's what's crazy. It is a berry farm. Ah, that's shit. where Steve Martin used to work. That yeah. was his first uh, first gig. He like moved from Texas to Garden Grove, and he got a job in the. There's a birdcage theater that's still there. I think at Knott's Berry Farm, and they used to do like magic shows and like let comedians do like five minutes, almost like a yeah. vaudeville kind of yeah. thing, and do it like five times a day. And that's that's how it's he started. Thing. Yeah. Yeah. Man, maybe I, sometimes people are like it's fun to go to. Like I think there's a roller coaster or something. I mean, I'd I really be down. know nothing about it, but that I found out what the name is. I mean, it's since COVID restrictions have been lifted. That's how little time I've known what Knott's Berry Farm actually was. This the is only a very recent development. The only thing I know it from is they change it to Not Scary Farm during that's right. Halloween, right? That's and I right. I feel like that's their only hook. That's a pretty good hook. Yeah, I'll give him that. Not scary so. What? Farm. What is y- besides <laughs> Jeff Goldblum? What do you? Uh, is there anything that does permeate? You know, there's a lot of Jurassic Parks at right. this point, is and it, a is lot that of like pop culture references. A lot to of it, references. For sure. The first one, I think, the first one, not 
is as close to like not like hyperbolic is as close to like a perfect movie as can exist. Yeah. It is like I believe it is a great movie on its own. I think it's a good it's not really an action movie. It's there's a lot of tension and uh there is action. There's like we're driving away from a dinosaur in our Jeep. Mm-hmm. But uh it's all there's it's the it's practical, so it holds up really well. There's very limited computer generated images cgi uh-huh. i don't know why i like said it out loud because i was trying to remember what cgi was in my head <laughs> there's very little cgi it holds up really well it's funny um and it is it's i imagine if you watch it for the first time now you'll be like that's what everyone like it's just there's so many things that are referenced in it's other things right, about right. it now legitimately scary the opening there scene are very scary oh yeah it is legitimately is yeah. scary. I, I, I've seen it as an adult. I saw it as a kid when I was like 12 yeah. or 13. And okay. then I also saw it as an adult because in New York, they used to show like midnight screenings of it yeah. at movie theaters. And uh, you go see it as an adult and it's still scary. And um, uh, yeah, it's I, great. I, I love it. I think I, it is so good. I don't mind that they keep doing it. <laughs> oh yeah. And I have not really loved any of the other ones. So let me ask you this though. So like uh, I'm a huge so Spielberg wise, I love Indiana Jones, even though I haven't seen the new one. But like, there's something about the action and all those mm-hmm. characters and the actual quest part that I feel like maybe. I mean, I haven't seen Jurassic Park, and that's like it. I don't know. I feel like I kind of know it before I think I've it's seen w- it. You oh, know? you probably definitely would. And I think that uh, I it, I have never seen Indiana Jones. No and way. I would say, from what I know of him, he is like actually an overlap of the two main male characters in Jurassic Park. I know. I would <laughs> like say, if you extract yeah. Indiana so Jones, wait, why you get, have you like, not seen it though? There's a lot. I don't know. What's that? I don't know. I'll watch it at some point. Probably. It's like the next thing. There's what five of them now. It's like the next yeah. thing that I want to dive in. Like if I'm going to take on a franchise. I mean, the first one is like really good because it's it's like you talk about not using using CGI. Like that was when yeah. everything was. Right. Real. He like had to had stand to, there with snakes. They had to build all this stuff, you know. Mm-hmm. I mean, they, they did show some of the stuff, how they put some fake snakes in there, but there's enough real ones there where it's right. like, yeah. this is really and dumb. And clearly, we're not doing everything real with Jurassic Park, but Jurassic Park, for when it came out, was mind-blowing at the time and still One holds up as far as, like, not like looking like crazy and fake. nerd interview things is James Cameron and Steven Spielberg are talking. Two of, you know... The goats, to use a sport terminology, yeah. right? Two of the greatest directors of all time, I think, and definitely two of the most in control directors of all time for like large ideas. Mm-hmm. And James Cameron, who had just come off Terminator, two, right. like the greatest sequel, one of the best action movies of all time, good enough that he can do whatever he wants forever type of movie. And Spielberg, who is coming off Schindler's List, <laughs> one of the greatest action movies of all time. Mm-hmm. Um, no. And he, so... Uh, Liam Neeson's like, Crichton, give me back. Jurassic Park, the book, had come out. And they both got an advanced copy of the book, Spielberg and James Cameron, and they read through it. And James Cameron tells this to Steven Spielberg. He's like, I called Crichton. And I was like, I need to make this into a movie. I want to buy this. I don't care how much it costs. I want the rights to make this movie. And he goes, I literally just got off the phone with Steven Spielberg. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, he just bought it. And then James Cameron was like, and I just sat there really upset until the movie came out. And then he was like, and then I watched the movie, and I was like, oh, that's so much better than I would have done. <laughs> oh like, I would have made an Aliens horror movie yeah. out of the dinosaurs. He's like, I was straight up wanted to make a horror movie. He's uh-huh. like, and you made the most accessible, yeah. great thriller right. of all time <laughs> like, meanwhile <laughs> bob saget called two days later coming off of dirty work and he was like i, I want to make it this yeah <laughs> <laughs> howard stern just came off of private bars and was like i want to do jurassic park yeah there's a yeah that the accessibility of like i guess james cameron just has to read faster or have somebody to read books for yeah. him like find if he liked the book that much that's what, a man who's never hurried wouldn't that be funny though if he was just yeah, like Yeah, I clearly Avatar took how long to come out for the second he's one? Like I saw Air Bud instead of reading Jurassic Park and, uh, <laughs> and missed out on getting it. <laughs> I, I I wanted to know how Dunstan would check in. So I watched that and it turns out he's trained. Uh, but I I mean I really, really truly think Jurassic the this is my problem with the rest of the Jurassic Parks, and it's not an, I'm not a nitpicking uncommon problem. There's three Jurassic Parks, then the break, then the Pratts, the mm-hmm. Chris Pratt ones, who I think 
does a good job in the new ones. Okay. I um, watched the first Pratt one, and it was fine. The Nothing. first, it, they did exactly what they did with yeah. Star Wars, which is remake the original one, but a little, like, it's the same. Yeah, right. we'll, we'll add a fucking giant dinosaur shark they, or whatever. The, the problem is that in the world of these Jurassic Park movies, all of the previous parks exist, and they still keep getting permits. <laughs> <laughs> And they'll I be thought like, you were gonna have a problem with like how good the movies are compared n- to the first one. No, you were no, just no, like no, the no. The, the, the literal problem is that they keep getting permits. Yeah, no one yeah. would and let them like, do that. They're like, okay, this is the sixth time they've got out and killed people. Yeah, yeah. And you know, we're gonna can we get a permit to build a bigger one, like a bigger dinosaur? Mm-hmm. And they're like cloning large dinosaurs, and they're like, yeah, it's fine. <laughs> and they just they keep they keep getting allowed. To open the park is un literally it's not this is unbelievable. It is not believable. Right. Even in the crazy world that this all exists in. Now people yeah. would go would, to it. And they, oh, people with their here kids. every time it yeah. opens. Right. Opening day yet again. Guess what happens? Everyone dies. It's like Action Park in New Jersey. Yeah. 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 <laughs> or the Schlitterbahn in Kansas, uh, which was the world's <laughs> largest water slide. Oh yeah. And not just like barely. They were like, we're going to topple the world record for largest water slide. And it, uh, someone got decap- uh, uh, decapitated on it because oh they went off It went off of the water slide thing and they hit the structure. And then you're just like, yeah, of course. Why well, push the envelope for uh, – The fact that you had to, like, move <laughs> states to the one that would let you do it. Right. Yeah, <laughs> like, yeah. But that is the thing that I – and then Jurassic Park kind of had to adjust, I think, to, like, well, we can't just build another bigger dinosaur – because it was that's all that happened is a bigger one, bigger one, bigger one, bigger one, flying one, one bigger which one. Which is like, yeah, I it's sort of like the what was happening with Fast and the Furious, so like yeah. bigger car, bigger car, fastest, and eventually they're like, okay, now the most. I don't know if this is the most recent Jurassic Park anymore. Maybe it's the penultimate of the Chris Pratt Jurassic Parks, but they're like selling dinosaurs as weapons to like rich people. Oh uh, my god! And I that I that like one. when when I read that that was the plot, it was like rich people. Buy dinosaurs in auction. I'm like, that's the first realistic thing they've done that yeah. that would happen. If we had fucking dinosaurs, they would get bought by oil guys, right? You know what I mean? And you would have a pet raptor, and then you found out they're cloning humans. This was the Jurassic Park plot yeah. involved cloning humans. I'm like, well, now I'm done. <laughs> and then I didn't see the one they brought Jeff Goldblum back. No, I and I'm like, either. oh, you guys really had to go to the jazz club. Like you couldn't swing it. They went and got him, and I didn't so see that one. Jeff Whatever. Goldblum's character is so. A jazz guy character. Oh yeah, like he, literally, he's just a. Uh, he's talking about chaos theory. Yeah, like every ten seconds in the movie and everything. Oh really? He really is. It is. If you spliced uh, uh, um, Indiana Jones in half, like the Indiana Jones would be the middle of the Venn diagram of the main characters mm-hmm. of, of uh, Jurassic Park. But man, the first one is still so good. It's a great soundtrack too. There, it's a, it's 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 funny yeah. to be like trying to sell well, someone the score, on score, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 Th- this is the most in a while that I've been like you did. You did Letterman, right? Yeah, yeah. I did Letterman too, and they did. I, they get you pick your song. I I literally right. came out to the Jurassic Park theme no song. No way, that's, that's the song amazing. that Paul and the band learned when. And I he came did out. it in so the cool. '80s too, before <laughs> the movie yeah. even came out. That was just such a good. <laughs> uh-huh. sw- you really uh, skated where the puck it. was going. If yeah, you did, they do a good job with it. They, they must killed, killed it. it. Yeah, I I showed up early because I was you know nervous and whatever. And as I showed up, as I walked in, they were rehearsing it, and I was just like, "You got to be kidding!" It was so cool. Yeah, I got bumped once, so I, I got to go back to the second time, which made it more fun just because you did the whole run-through of almost being on. Regis Philbin talked too long. So, <laughs> like, so I basically wow. did the whole thing, and then Dave apologized to me on the air. Yeah. And then was like, we'll have him back as soon as That's he's like available. That's like a fun hype. You know? Yeah, yeah, it was great. And then uh, so I was on – it was Janelle Monet was in my dressing room because on Thursday they did two shows and then it was a, the funny part was you got good hair, but like I was, I was, uh, you know, like one of the things is like, you gotta wear a suit yeah, Mm -hmm. and then you want, you want to look good even though you're not like a hair and makeup person. But there was this band called first aid kit, which is like two like beautiful Swedish girls. And they're just like a hair and makeup department's, dream you know right they're like the mannequin you learn on so (laughs) so they're like just trying dresses on them and trying outfits and i come in and like hey am i (laughs) supposed to come in the guy literally like puts mousse on my hair and then just pushes my my hair down (laughs) of my face you're like you're all set (laughs) and then that's when i got bumped which is good because i'm like i didn't look so good think about it for next time dinner for the schmucks um, 
Man, there are so many Jurassic Parks. I'm not happy looking. How many is there? I think exactly. there's six, seven, maybe. Yeah. Jurassic Park, Lost World is the second one. Which Lost World is what I feel like I know. Jurassic Park 3. I have been on the ride, though. Oh, really? Yeah. Where is that at? Universal? Universal. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I've been on the That's ride. That's really good. And then there's the Chris Pratt's, which start with Jurassic World. And I, I'm not sure exactly how many of those. Jurassic World Fallen Kingdom, Jurassic World Dominion. Um, and then I'm going to assume this movie, Jumanji, Welcome to the Jungle, is also Jurassic Park. <laughs> <laughs> Well, you got to go on the ride that you love the movie so much. I you're, do you're in love the, the movie. It is and, right. Uh, do it's you ever really cool? What do you ever th- like? It's when people ask you what your favorite movie is. Mm-hmm. Is that an easy answer for you? No, because it's definitely categories. I especially. always, when pushed, will land on Jurassic Park. Yeah, if that's a good in, answer. I will land on it's Jurassic Park. The best Park. comedy. If, if I if I get into <laughs> categories, it's different. But if they're like best, 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 I'll be. Like, I, I will eventually land on that. I'll land on that or the Truman Show. It's kind of where I'll always really? land. If I'm like pushed and and, and you have to pick the one, I uh, go Big Lebowski, and as a as a, yeah. a a dude, I always feel like it's the it's a it's a shitty generic answer, but I, I genuinely feel that's the that's the movie that when you put on makes me feel the most like uh like I don't know something feels good like whenever you see like Tom Hanks on screen, you're like you're I'm describing safe. This li- is you're good. describing liking something. Yeah, I just really <laughs> yeah. I just really no, no. feel good and warm That's and nice. That's the food when in my mouth yeah. makes me feel the most like I'm watching the Big Lebowski with my teeth. Yeah. That's well, how you describe liking. The thing a meal. is like so I only knew I'm trying to think how I got into the Coen brothers because I, I definitely wasn't you know, it was with everything. When you grew up like you grew up in Missouri. I don't know if you grew up in the city or Basically, you're kind of fed all the music that's on the radio. Yeah. You're fed the movies. And then it's not until, like, you get to college and even after, you know, that, like, you find out, oh, this is, like, the really good stuff. Like, yeah. I specifically had uh, film. I, I, I majored in film in college oh, with okay. English. And so I was, like, it was a lot of you watch all of the ones you're supposed to. Yeah. And then a whole semester on Kubrick and then a whole semester on right. Hitchcock. And then I, I did le- – I mean – if I'm going, Oh Brother Where Art Thou would have, was my favorite movie at one yeah. point, and it's my favorite Coen Brothers movie. Yeah, um, I absolutely love it. It is probably the movie I've seen the most, aside oh, wow. from The Lion King, which put my little brother to sleep when we were growing up. That's what I call you when know, we my, killed him. Here's this will this will not blow your minds, but like, so I do love that movie, especially the music is what mm-hmm. I really love about it. Um, but I became. Like, Miller's Crossing is by far my favorite movie sure. of all time. Like, easily. And I love Barton Fink, which I didn't even know about. Like, I just happened to watch it. Like, oh, yeah, this is a Coen Brothers, too. I think it was a girlfriend that was like, yeah, this is a Coen Brothers, too. And and then I read that, like, they were having such trouble writing Miller's Crossing that they started Barton Fink, which is basically about yeah. a guy who can't write a screenplay. That's, yeah. Oh, that's and so that's, weird. so they did that in the same year. And those are both like the same kind of like, like they're both great. And then I just saw Blood Simple for the first time. And I don't know if you've seen that. That's not. that's their first movie. Oh, I haven't seen that one And uh, yeah, and that holds up. So I do like, love the Coens. Great. I, it's, yeah. I really like, it's funny to be like the tonal overlap of what's funny in all of their movies is so unique. And I, uh, even if you go like No Country for Old Men is funny, yeah. when it's funny in a similar way that Burn After Reading is right. funny sometimes, and how that is funny makes me laugh like nothing else. Yeah, it's kind of like a Tarantino, you know, yeah, like, absurdity that it's happening in this scenario. Right, right. Man, I do love a brother. Well, uh, uh, what's the one? Uh, oh, I was just going to mention. Oh, well, the scene. For Miller's Crossing, the scene for me, and there's a lot of them that people love. There's like the the scene John Turturro's like he's uh, he's supposed to shoot him in the woods mm-hmm. and he doesn't shoot him, and so that scene people love that. But uh, the one that's my favorite is Albert Finney's like laying in bed in the robe, and they're cu- like they sent the two guys to kill him. Yeah, and so like he's smoking a cigar, listening to Danny Boy. It's like the most kind of contrived scene but then it's so great because like he sees like the smoke coming up from those guys his bodyguards getting shot yeah and then he hides under the bed and then they miss him and then he crawls out the window and like jumps out with a tommy gun and then just shooting the yeah. car yeah and then he pull afterwards he pulls the cigar back out and puts it in you know it's just, yeah it's so perfect i really really i really do love them that one i mean i that became like in college 
I, I was I didn't know anything growing up. I like barely had a CD player, mm-hmm. never had a DVD player. Like in college, it be, I became very consumptive. I was like, who is, what is Radiohead? You know what right, I mean? Right, who, yeah. What are the Coen brothers? What are these things? And then you get so it, engulfed in this stuff. But I don't feel really bad about it. Like, I'll see it now that I know that you like oh, it yeah, that much. Oh, yeah, Dress right. Like, I just watched, um, was it pa- uh, Paths of Glory? It's a Kubrick, Kubrick movie. Kubrick movie, yeah. And I had never seen it, and yeah. it's on Amazon, so it's like, you know what? I'm going to watch this it's on a this tough, flight. It's a tough one. I couldn't give the hard sell I do to direct, because I'm like, hey, you want to uh, work? But I love Pat's Glory. Yeah, but I'm like, you want it? It's not exactly a movie. I'm you, I get hyped to hype to. No, people. no. <laughs> but it's like it's a Kubrick movie, yeah. so I'll watch it, and then you see Kirk Douglas, and you're just like, oh man, this guy is amazing. Like yeah. I, you know, it's, we saw him like in his older years, but it's like, yeah. you know, I'll watch any Paul Newman movie. You know, there's just certain people that you're just like, oh man. And now Kirk Douglas is one of those guys. Like I'm seeking out like stuff that he was in because he was so good in that. Yeah. All right, everybody, we're going to take one more break, and we will be right back. We're going to play a few games. All right, everybody, we are back. Uh, Real quick, we're going to do a rapid fire getting to know of you because it is your first time here on the podcast. All right. Uh, We might as well wrap up with knowing something about you. Okay. Um, These are just some quick questions. Uh, We already talked about, aside from uh, Jurassic Park, the other movies you decided to do, we talked about your favorite movie. Uh, What movie do you think you've seen the most? Oh, man, I would say there's a handful of these, like, 80s, like, I love, uh, well, it, it, recently, I would say The Other Guys and uh, other guys. and uh, Step Brothers became, like, th- and MacGruber became mm-hmm. very rewatchable, funny I was stuff. so late to MacGruber. It's yeah. so good, man. And finally yeah. saw it, and I was like, God damn, it was I so I think there's funny. something so stand-up comedian about wedging MacGruber into a conversation <laughs> 12 years after it was out <laughs> yeah. in theaters. Just to yeah. be like, well, they made a show. And then they're all excited about it, yeah. I didn't even know they <laughs> oh, made yeah, a they show. Did. Oh, my God, you're right. So I haven't seen it Was that on either. Peacock? Oh, or was it you'll on love it, yeah. Things? It's on it good? Peacock. Yeah. All the original people are in it. It's it's great. There's like two or three seasons. So that that is – and also a billion-dollar movie is just like yeah. my – just funny, like, put-you-to-sleep kind of thing. But uh, but I will say, like, Better Off Dead, One Crazy Summer, um, a bunch of those, like, real genius. Mm-hmm. Like, there's a bunch of those, like, eight, Midnight Run. There's yeah. a bunch of those 80s, yeah. like, just comedy action things that, that I Which you have a hard time watched. finding a play that you like to talk about the other guys. What's that? Like the other guys, like a newish comedy action yeah. uh, buddy cop thing. It's a harder time having those around these days. It feels yeah, like. and I think that got uh, as as it aged. I think more people like I just showed a couple it's people so that movie, and they had no idea. Like Bobby Cannavale was in it. I believe like, it was the last time it. the Rock. Oh, you've never seen it? Oh no. man, you'll love it. It was the last time Dwayne the Rock Johnson laughed at himself. Yeah, oh. <laughs> it was like 2011. Has oh, he lost a sense it, of humor about himself? The, it, yeah, I think so. I think oh, he's, a little, he's so a, much, very much a brand at this it's point. It's so much money, right? Because it's, it's yeah. like it's it's uh, Sam Jackson and The Rock in the opening scene. Yeah, and it's like all these cars and a bank getting smashed. Like, I mean, it's like half of the budget of the movie happens within the first six minutes and the last six minutes. Yeah, like yeah. the <laughs> last. It, it's it's crazy. Um, okay, here we go. What all right is a popular or beloved movie that just doesn't do it for you? Just doesn't do it for me. Oh uh, man, like a like a I'll I'll say it's the music equivalent of U two for me. Like sure, <laughs> like sure. I, I, I totally, appreciate it. I know totally. everybody likes it. You but understand I just don't get all it. of the parts yeah. and the, and what they've contributed, but right. it just doesn't do it for you. And it just doesn't happen. And maybe a movie we forced onto your iPhone without your permission. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> but I'll say like. Are we saying like critically acclaimed or like uh, totally box to office? You. I'm trying to, I'm trying to think like a critically acclaimed one that I just didn't like. Uh, man, it's hard. I lo- I love movies. So what you did do you, you like have Harry one? Potter? It was okay. <laughs> I mean, uh, I I would really have to think about it. I don't think I've, the reason I write the questions is so I don't have to answer them. Uh, uh, okay. that is a, no, I, I'm what sitting here you, thinking about mine too. That's a tricky one too. Uh, I'm cause I'm, and cause I'm a little more on the other side of it. I tend to like movies that people don't like. Uh, I tend uh-huh. to like, and I, I like, I think, I don't think I have terrible taste in movies. I'll go into a movie knowing 
oh, everyone doesn't like that. And maybe technically it wasn't the greatest, but I enjoyed it the whole way through. I think people whatever. really liked, I only enjoyed one Pirates of the Caribbean. I only saw one and I enjoyed and it. And I think people, the rest of them made billions and billions and billions of dollars. Right. And I just had a really hard time. Although there was a performance in one of them where someone was Davy Jones and CGI was so good. Yeah. That they, I can't, it had to be the most expensive thing ever when it was like 2007 and they made it. But that I had a hard time with any of them. As much as I liked Johnny Depp's performance in the first one, uh, it, it's sort of like watching like late season of The Office Dwight Schrute, where you're like, <laughs> are we doing an impression of Dwight at this point, or is it still the character? Yeah, yeah. So I would say maybe that. I don't know if that counts. Uh, if you're talking about him, like I recently, I'm excited for the new Meg movie. I think it's going to be fun. The Meg big, two, the Meganing. Yeah, and, <laughs> yeah. And uh, I was telling my wife I was excited about it, and she's like, she's like, the first one sucked though, and she's out of town right now. So I just watched it the other night, yeah. and I was watching it, knowing like, yeah, okay. It sucks, but That's I, I forgot shark. Dwight Schrute was in it's it. It's a big shark, right? Yeah, but I enjoyed it. I enjoyed it, and it was the second time I've seen it. I haven't seen it since it came out, but I liked it. Well, I mean, for, I had fun for, for the it. most part, if it's a comedy, if I get a couple laughs, I'm good with it. But then there's definitely been some comedies lately where I'm just like, uh, I don't know about that one. There you go. The Hangover is one for me. Yeah? yeah. I don't think the, ha- I, the Hangover was fine. I got uh-huh. a couple laughs out of it. But I was like, this movie is way overblown. The last time I was in Las Vegas, I was just driving back from Missouri to here, and I just stopped overnight in Vegas. And there were still people in the front baby T-shirts. Yeah. yeah. And you're like, still? Still? Yeah. But I I guess it was. It did make like a billion dollars. You know what I mean? And there's three of them, right? Like somebody could be wearing the Galifianakis beard and whatever, baby Mm -hmm. holder on the front like they do on Hollywood Boulevard Mm -hmm. here and charge $5. That's in the National Comedy Museum. Is it really the actual one? Yeah, so, that's what that's what I'm saying. People <laughs> made that movie like the great, like the hugest yeah. thing ever. I do miss and when comedies fun. could be that for the year. Well, I do like I, I that it too. was very under. Like, what was the movie he made with um, Robert think, Downey Jr.? No, the one he made with Tom Hanks, the uh, uh, Zach Galifianakis. No, no, uh, Todd Phillips. Oh, oh no, it's Billy Bob Thornton. Does something for sco- School for Scoundrels? Castaway Two. I don't know this movie. There, he did School Cast for Scoundrels. I work for UPS now in another uh, plane crash. Well, know. that's Charlie's War with Wilsons <laughs> was Castaway oh, yeah, 2. Oh, yeah, yeah, right. No, School for Scoundrels was like a huge budget, had like all these like A-list actors, and it just bombed. That's uh, like Amsterdam, the movie that was all – I, th- I didn't know if it was actually real or just advertising, but uh, I saw so many ads for Amsterdam. And then never heard a thing. You know what I did like that people didn't really enjoy? I guess the opposite of the question was I really liked, what is it, American, the movie with this insane cast, Amy Adams, Christian Bale. Oh. Amer- oh. What is it called? American, American Gangster. something. American Gangster. Mm. Yeah. I love that movie. Wait, is that? No, it's American something else because American Gangster is Denzel, right? Because I, I just I remember American Splendor. Why can I not American Hustle? Hustle. Ah, yeah, right. I right. liked American Hustle. I thought it was so much. Oh, fun. wasn't Louis C.K. in that for a second? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, Jeremy Renner. It was like that was one of those that was just they threw the cast at your face for right. six months leading up to it. Yeah. That's what but Babylon Amy Adams. Was. Is, Amy Adams is like a top three or four actor. She's for me. awesome. Oh, you you brought up one for me. Okay. Uh, Trouble with the Curve is one of the worst movies I've ever seen in my life. Oh, I, I barely remember it. Clint Eastwood, Amy Adams, uh, two people that didn't oh, know yeah. anything about baseball doing yeah. a movie about baseball. I have to, <laughs> I, I'm not the right person to, I don't think Clint Eastwood's that great. Oh, yeah? <laughs> uh, but I I like the, the one, I mean, he. I think he's a better John Wayne. I'll convert think, you, man. You got to see, this is, and I just saw this, Not. it's his first his first Western in the U.S. that he directed is High Plains Drifter. And I think he's a good director. No, I, I like if you watch that, okay. you'll love it, man. It's and it's on all those lists, but yeah. he he literally directed and starred in this. Yeah, and it's like you, the only one that wasn't like a, you know, I think yeah, he yeah, did yeah. it in Reno or something like that. And it's like so good, so many great character actors from all those westerns, and okay. it's like I do like old it's westerns. pretty edgy. So it's it's good. You it, it still holds up too. All right, our final question: Have you ever walked out of a movie? Uh, yes, I have. Uh, what if I didn't ask what movie it is? <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. What movie? Well, now you're bringing it up. See, I I was feeling like I was in a good mood, and now I can hate on things. But so, uh, so I grew up in this really small town. 
and we're in high school, I think, and it's like summer, and there's like there's like eight of us in like a a buddy's like station wagon, and you know the drinking beers on the side of the road. And then we drive through town. There's one movie theater. Mm -hmm. So we see on the marquee, this is before internet savvy, it says beaches on the front. Okay. And so we're like, oh, yeah, spring break movie. (laughs) And so we all go in, and uh, it's fucking Bette Midler singing on the front of the Hollywood Bowl. Yeah. And they were just like, this, boo, this sucks. And we start throwing <laughs> shit at it. And then all of us left. And there was, like, all these old people, because I guess it's about cancer. It's, like, a very touching movie. But we were just, sure. like, we just wanted, like, naked Literal. girls at, the, at yeah, yeah, Fort yeah. Lauderdale in the first ten minutes, and we didn't get it. So sure. we were like, Well, we, that's an interesting reason We wanted to walk porkies, it's, too. Right. It, it, yeah. And then it wasn't quite. Beaches. But, it, but how badly did they mismanage the name of that movie? Right. Pretty bad. I mean, you bought tickets. There's no beaches. (laughs) (laughs) Uh, All right, we got one game we're going to get into here, and then we're going to get out of here. This game is called Before and Afters. Can I ask which one that you uh, walked out of? I don't think I've ever walked out of a movie. I've walked out of Mortal Kombat, too. I feel like maybe I have. I can't remember. Maybe in college I did. Did you fall asleep in a movie? I'll fall asleep all the time. Yeah. I mean, I loved Oppenheimer and almost fell asleep. I was just tired. I fell asleep in the uh, the um, oh man, what's his name? the The guy who played Remington Steele. Um, he was the horrible Pierce Brosnan. Mm-hmm. I fell asleep in his James Bond movie. Did he make more uh, than one? He I made a few. Know. They made them all in the in Nintendo sixty four games that I think like oh, outlived really? the lore of his entire time as James Bond. I fell asleep like a half hour into that just because of I was bored. I'm just like this guy does not even want his hair messed up. He's not James Bond. <laughs> <laughs> uh, all right, here this game is called Before and Afters. How it works is two movies have been smashed together into one movie. I will read you the smashed together plot. Okay. You have to tell me the smashed together title. All right. So an example of some smashed together titles could be The Wolf of Wally Street, which is The Wolf of Wall Street and Wally. Okay. Um, Another movie I haven't seen. By the a way. Wally? Wally. Oh, that's pretty good. Yeah. Uh, Saving Private Silverman. We got Saving Private Ryan and Saving Silverman. Uh, Fargo, which is Argo and Fargo. Uh, all sorts of mismashes of movie titles smashed together. It sounds hard, but I'm. You guys can I'll work together. You can okay. be on the same team. All right. All right. Uh, we'll start off with some easier ones, and we'll get into. We have some. What I would call expert difficulty ones. Here do we have recently. intellectual property from these names now? If we combine them, are you allowed to do that with a? Is that just like claim. sampling that you can just like yeah. Right. Yeah, two yeah, movie yeah. plots? I'm the dead mouse of <laughs> podcast games. <laughs> <laughs> here we go. Number one, as a jury deliberates a murder charge against a teen, one juror realizes he has a special mutated power to control metal. Okay. So this is going to be one of those, I'm going to guess, x Men kind of things that you haven't seen and I haven't really seen either. Like as Wolverine. A jury, in a jury, in as a, a jury deliberates. Wolverine duty. So it's going to be like 12 angry Wolverines or something. <laughs> uh, Terminator. Uh, You're right Night there. Court. 12, You're angry, 12 angry m- Marvels. Man, <laughs> 12 angry. 12 angry. You can't handle the metal. All right, we're looking for 12 angry X-Men. Ah, oh, shit. It's we right there. I should have got you that. You said it all. You said Pretty all close. the words. I literally said, yeah, did I even say X-Men earlier? You said this is like an X-Men movie. Shit. And I'm like, not only is it like one, it is one. And that's that's 12 angry men is one of the ones on the list that I have and to I, see. And I haven't even seen 12 angry men. Yeah, he just said jury, and I'm oh, going yeah, with it's that. It's good. It's either that or jury duty. It holds Polly up Short. and is good and fun to yeah, watch, yeah. especially if you like older movies. It's very, thea- it's very literal theatrical. Right. Right, right. All right, number two. A Hong Kong detective inspector is teamed up with a wisecracking LAPD officer to investigate a first-grade teacher who caught the eye of an ambitious teenager as well as the man he asked for advice on wooing her. Okay, we gotta go back to this is a Jackie Chan movie, right? Hong Kong Fui Hall Pass. A toilet. 
<laughs> the a, problem is when you like work your way through one. I'm like Hollywood would greenlight that. Like that's <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> <laughs> they would make that. All right, this break it down. Let's get the first half. A again. Hong Kong detective inspector is teamed up with a wisecracking LAPD officer. Okay, this has to be the Chris Tucker. Is this the Chris yeah. Tucker? Uh, which which what movie is that? Not bad boys, but the to uh, investigate a first grade teacher money. who's caught the eye of an ambitious teen and the man he asked for advice. Yeah, what is the ja- uh, the Jackie Chan Chris I'm Tucker movies? Blanking on it. Yeah, I know. It's uh, I'm trying to think of the Jackie Chan movies. It's not Rumble in the Bronx. It's not. What's the fuck? The fuck's the name of the Jackie Chan movie with Chris Tucker? I can't think of it either. My, uh, yeah, I've got time. <laughs> 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 All right, guys. We're and then what's the other part of it? Uh, the, the first Hong grade Kong teacher t- who's rush caught hour? Teacher. Is it rush hour? Rush hour. Yes. Okay. So first grade uh, teacher who's caught the eye of an ambitious teenager and the man he asked for advice on wooing her. Wait, Rush. first grade teacher has eyes on who? A first grade teacher who has caught the eye of an ambitious teen and the man he asks for advice on wooing her. Rush, first grade bad teacher. teacher. Rush, the graduate. Where? <laughs> Rush, <laughs> Rush powder. <laughs> <laughs> we are looking for Rushmore hour. Fuck. Rushmore hour. Shit. We should have got that with a, the plot of. Yeah, that is. Um, yeah, I didn't. I, I, R- Rushmore I didn't. Pop, and I know Rush Hour. Where a bunch of people stand, stand in the middle of a frame. Uh, here we go. Number three. <laughs> we tied zero zero here. <laughs> a man who realizes he's a background character in a video game must investigate what could be a murder committed by a robot. Okay, I just saw this movie. This is the one with. Uh, Wow, what's his name from the Wrexham doc who got the, the, the football team? And uh, Vanilla. What's his name? He's um, Skynet. Vanilla Skynet, <laughs> once again, a movie that would get greenlit. <laughs> I know, that one's great. <laughs> now, hold on. Now I'm blanking on this Tom guy's Tom Cruise can be a Terminator. What's the <laughs> actor's name? He has he owns Mint Mobile now, and he's... Uh, uh, Ryan, Ryan Reynolds. Ryan Reynolds. Okay. Oh, what's the name of that movie, though? Where he's the background in a video game. I just don't know if he would appreciate Player you being like, one. what's that guy who owns Mint Mobile? <laughs> 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 no, that's what I see. And the Rex of thing. I also know he's a fucking, that other superhero guy. Uh, I love how you keep having me on the podcast about movies, but both of us know nothing about movies. Um, <laughs> not know nothing. Uh, okay, so what was the name of that movie where he was the extra in the uh, video I'm hearing game. Player you One. I'm sorry. Something Player One. Oh, yeah. That's is it not that? Ready Player One was a movie. Oh, uh, right. But background, not. I'm not sure. Deadpool or <laughs> <laughs> All right. Diarrhea pool. We're looking for free guy robot. Free guy. Free guy and I robot. Uh, yeah, yeah. Free guy, guy is a movie. Free robot. guy okay. robot. Got it. All right. Which of these do I think we can do to la- stick the landing? I know. Are we on to the expert ones yet? I feel like yes, we've Yes, we are now. This Okay, we'll do this one that is a horrific one. You got to do a movie that's not on Tubi. You All right. Here. Go mainstream. Oh, I'm, a st- <laughs> I, I'm, I'm strictly a view, boo. <laughs> a towering newspaper magnet utters curious final words, then flashes back to his life chasing a hoodie-wearing marsupial across the outback. Hud Sucker Dundee. A, a towering newspaper magnate. Magnate? Is that what you call someone? Okay. Like yeah, Utters okay. curious final words. Um, then flashes back to his life, chasing a hoodie wearing marsupial across the outback. Okay, I'm gonna guess th- Rosebud. I'm gonna guess the Rosebud <laughs> is part of one of the movies. <laughs> okay, so what that movie Citizen. So it's Citizen Kangaroo Jack. Citizen yeah. Kangaroo Jack! Yeah. Right. yeah! Oh my god. Nice. Just, just looking That's back here one. on this episode, uh, Adam's primary contribution of movie knowledge was knowing Kangaroo Jack. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> and my goal of always trying to squeak powder into a thing yeah. I happened again. <laughs> <laughs> Um, okay, well, you know, that's good. I think that's good for us here today. Uh, Paul, thank you so much for having never seen Jurassic Park. Well, thank you. Thank, thank you, for thank you guys here. for reading this script. Now I'm motivated to finish it. So. Yeah. Uh, go ahead, let everyone know what you'd like to let them know about oh, you. Oh, yeah, the new, uh, yeah. my new album is uh, Ice Cream versus Everything. Uh, I, I recorded <laughs> at the uh, National Comedy Center in Jamestown, New York, which is like the birthplace of Lucille Ball. So I, I recorded it like in the Tropicana room from the it's I awesome. Love Lucy set. So that's it was, so cool. It was great. We did. It's over an hour material. It's number three on the album charts right now. So uh, just go to paulhaswebsite dot com or blondemedicine.com dot com. Great, and get all of our albums. Paul has right? a website dot com. That's great. 
Easy to remember. It's nice to just have it. Yeah, it's easy to remember. <laughs> there you go. Yeah. Um, easy to remember a sentence than like a, someone you don't know's name anyway. Yeah. Right. You can't. Sp- people can't spell Morrissey. I you know, know I have this guys. thing now called a hype card. That it's basically just if someone taps it, it pulls my website up on their phone. Oh, really? Oh. It's really nice. That's pretty cool. I have um, guitar picks with my website on the back. You do. You have literal dick pics yeah, it's as a well. Penis on the front. A of penis it. is on a guitar yes. pick. <laughs> and Adam, is there anything you want to tell people about besides your dick? No. Picks? Well, I'm gonna have a blind medicine one too, but it's gonna be a special. So we gotta wait for the strikes awesome. to be over to see if we can sell to anybody. So hang yeah. tight and follow me on the socials, so Adam D. Newman. You can go find Paul's uh, album on blondemedicine.com, and they got a. They, uh, that's where I did my album, and just pretty much great comedians all around on yeah. there, too. And check good that stuff. Out. Great Brought dude us who runs together it. today, yeah. so that's good. Thank you guys so much for listening. I want to give a shout-out to Masubi and Bubs on the Discord for the podcast for coming up with some of the titles for before and afters today. Thank you so much. I've never seen it.